Hello everyone, this is Life Questions and I'm Bill Harris, your host. We're glad you could join us today for a spirit-filled conversation about life from a biblical perspective. We have amassed a team of local pastors to provide biblical insights to your viewer questions about life and come up with answers to share with you today. And guess what? They are here. I want you to meet them right now. First, we have Pastor Ryan Benroth of the Well Apostolic Center. Next, Pastor Jason Goss of Wapik Church. And we have Pastor Rick Lamb of Hume United Methodist Church. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Gordon McPhail of the Grace Community Church. Gentlemen, happy to have you with us today. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Now, he, here's the question I'd like to lead our discussion with, gentlemen. Statistics are emerging that indicate childhood mental health issues have increased during the past two years of school based on pandemic restrictions. Now, the viewer says this is not a question about those restrictions, but rather advice for parents who are trying to help their children work through the current situation. Even though some restrictions are lifting, there are still a high number of hospitalized child psych ward situations and many more issues that are often kept quiet or kept hidden. Um, how can parents help their children given this situation? Um, who, was, who was first going to answer? You were going to answer, that's right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this is definitely a real situation for children that are actually experiencing trauma in the middle of this um, because we've created a uh, a situation through our response and our attitudes where like they're constantly under threat their life is constantly under threat it's not unlike um, a situation that a soldier would go through in deployment that okay. where they're immersed in a situation where their life is constantly under threat mm -hmm. and then that affects your soul sure. it affects your mind it affects the way that you think and Children are experiencing the same thing. I think adults are going through, uh, depending sure. on, because everybody's uh, response is different, depending on what you believe, how you process things, how you confront or don't confront uh, mm -hmm. perceived threats. And so I, I think there's a tremendous amount of people, including children, that need to receive healing from this process. So yeah. um, from a parent side of things though, uh, you're the authority in their life and I I would suggest that you can pray over them while they're sleeping even mm -hmm. you don't have to make it a, a scary thing but right. but you're releasing healing over their mind over their soul you're you're declaring that trauma be healed that that spirits of fear and anxiety would would leave them and because the word says that we're not given a spirit of fear but of power, and love, and of a sound mind. So you you got to remove some of those things and replace with the fullness of what God intended for them. And and you can also, you got to have discussion with them too because some of them, and you might have to have some changes going on in your heart too because some of this of what their perception is likely comes from your perception. And it's like we might need to adjust and and think that we're actually in the refuge of God, that we're hidden in Him where the enemy cannot touch us. Mm -hmm. So bringing in some scripture that reinforces truth yeah. of God's safety and His protection yeah. that confronts the lies that perhaps they're believing, that's an important I, I aspect think, too. I, I think to add that, you need to over communicate. Mm -hmm. don't, don't assume that they know something and don't assume they don't know something. Yeah. Kids are very perspective. They pick up on things. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm sure you've had kids that they heard this could kill you, this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, so you think about the, when they hear those thoughts, what it goes through a child's emotion, what goes through their mind. So you need to over communicate with them, talk mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. um, allow them to express their feeling. And don't, don't let, don't, your feelings are not wrong. What you feel is how I'm, I'm approaching situations. Well, then how do I take those feelings and in light of scripture, in light of what about, mm -hmm. how do I make those feelings line up with what God's teaching mm -hmm. me? So I think mm -hmm. that's a big thing is as a parent, especially in this time, you need to over communicate to the point where it almost feels like you're talking too much to your kid, but it'll be a good thing mm -hmm. because that's how they let those feelings out. Do, yeah. you, let them, do you let them say I'm fearful? Yes, mm -hmm. let them, but then correctly point that in the right direction 
why are you fearful? And then how do I conquer fear? Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do I conquer? So by allowing, and this also helps them become a really good disciple of Christ when they know, hey, I can take these emotions and yes. these feelings and then put it in the right context of, mm -hmm. okay, I'm afraid, but I don't need to live in that fear. Mm -hmm. How do I conquer that? So, Excellent. A lot of the uh, learning that I had during this pandemic was that uh, it, in order to maintain a sense of stability, you have regular things that take place. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, when, when the church is closed, uh, that was a disruption to our regular way of life. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, one of the lessons that I got ta taught that, uh, that if you can have regular scheduled things back in your life, and so we went right back to having church open. Uh, we were off for two months and then we went right back. And I believe that that's helped the life of our church uh, with that consistency. And, and I think that would be a similar thing for kids that maybe supper with the family every mm -hmm. night yeah. would be a, a, a reemphasis. Re Re-emphasis of the stability in the home and mm -hmm. that sort of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's one of the things that we need to do is reinforce uh, regular actions, regular things in the life. What about the possibility of bringing in a Christian psychologist to talk to parents or the general congregation as well to help give some perspective and uh, encourage parents uh, in terms of what to do with their children. What do you think? Yeah, I think especially for children that are facing re genuine mental health issues that uh, the two most important elements that, that we're marrying are the dependence on a healthy, holy community of faith and a healthy, preferably godly, mental health community infrastructure. And that yeah. if we marry these two together for those that are really struggling with those, those situations, I mean, the, the pandemic, however the restrictions played out in different contexts, one of the things that we all experienced was dislocation from our communities. Yeah. And we're social creatures and God created us mm -hmm. for a social economy to, to know each other, to be in families, to be around each other, to be supported by one another. And it contributes directly to anxiety, to depression, to you know, all sorts of different things that the children and adults face. So I think being a part of those regular communities in our households, and in our churches, and using and relying on godly uh, medical communities can also help as well. Mm -hmm. okay. I actually had an opportunity to minister to an elementary aged uh, young lady that How was, old? I think she was 10 exactly. at the time. It was within the last year. Um, but she was experiencing debilitating anxiety, and it, it was because of this. So I think. I think I can't, I can't remember the exact specifics, but I think in her grandparents got COVID or something and it maybe had required hospitalization. And that was kind of the beginning of the fear. And then her parents tested positive for COVID. And so she thought Ooh. her parents were going to die. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And for a child, that's a tremendously yeah. terrifying, traumatizing experience yep. to think that your parents are going yeah. to die. And it's like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. And so, um, what did you tell her? Well, we talked about those things a little, little bit like what we were saying here. It's like, well, let's talk about what, why, why are you afraid? Like she didn't, wouldn't go to school. She wouldn't, uh, she would throw up if she did go to school. It's just My out of that goodness. fear and anxiety. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we talked about why, why are you afraid? We'd replace those lies with truth like well we don't have to be afraid of that we're we can trust god to to be our healer mm -hmm. our protector our refuge mm -hmm. ever-present help in time of strength yes. you know and uh led her through some prayers of and her mom with her yes. um kind of they, we kind of did it all together of renouncing our agreement with fear because that that's been the motivating spirit through this whole thing mm -hmm. is a spirit of fear driving decisions right. <laughs> and yeah, we got to have the spirit of the lord Amen. driving our decisions Amen. and it doesn't mean we do stupid stuff <laughs> and no. unwise things you know but we can't we can't be moved by fear all the time Amen. old testament talks about there the this you replace a spirit of despair with a spirit of praise 
So mm -hmm. that, that idea of, listen, when I'm going through those moments where I'm afraid, one of the best things I can do is give God praise. Because mm -hmm. you don't feel like giving God praise when you're scared. No, you it don't. Just, <laughs> but when I do that, it allows me to walk in his presence. It allows me to sense his peace, even though I don't have an answer. And I was reading something just this morning that said that when you do just what you're describing, you're taking your thoughts and your focus off of the circumstances right. and putting them on him yeah. and knowing that he's going to take care of you. Yeah. And, and it, um, it gives you a good change of mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is another question. In fact, there's few questions in here that deal with health related issues. This second one, question number four for you, gentlemen. Um, my grandma's health is failing and she says she is ready to meet Jesus, but some of my aunts and uncles are uh, doing everything they can to keep her alive, even though she tells me she is miserable. I feel trapped in the middle. My grandmother is a believer and says she knows where she's going. How do I speak to my family about this? It's causing family division, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for this writer, this viewer? Well, let's, we'll back up a little bit and then we'll get to the, this is why it's so important that you have a family will, power of attorney, somebody to help make these conversations easier once you get to that place because this mm -hmm. is what happens mm -hmm. is everybody's got different opinions. Everybody's got, and, and she doesn't mention whether or not her aunts and uncles are believers because that just then heightens that conversation even more because mm -hmm. it's one of those things that I know you guys, are, when you do a funeral for someone who's a believer, it's a, there's a peace in the room. Everybody's a, when it's not a believer, oh my goodness, the emotion, the overwhelming. Yeah. So having these conversations ahead of time helps with this conversation. The biggest thing you can do though is communicate. You've got to have a talk. Yeah. Otherwise feelings are going to just grow and things are going to be unsaid and that's only going to lead to more problems. Well, that's just it. I mean, people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to have a will. They don't want to, you know, talk to the family about what's going on in their life or they know that it's coming. I mean, none of us have, are going to get out of it alive, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and, and so it's important to have that discussion and be able to express, okay, this is what I want. And, uh, and even having some papers in, in order, like you say, uh, a do not resuscitate or yeah. whatever it takes in order, to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to uh, convey your wishes to the family. And, uh, and so that, you know, if dementia sets in, which is not an uncommon pro uh, problem, uh, then your wishes have already been, you know, finalized in a document mm -hmm. that will uh, hopefully be preserved for and honored for your wishes. So. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm going to, you know, with the half point in our discussion right now, we need to take a break. Keep your thoughts. Don't, don't lose what you're thinking. We'll be right back right after this. Stay with us, everybody. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Well, thank you for staying with us. We are going to continue our discussion on the last question that we approached. And this is where the grandmother in the family uh, wishes to go to be with the Lord because she's tired and, and ready to go. She knows where she's going but certainly certain family members who love her are doing all they can to keep her here. And that, that's understandable, but there's been some family um, divisions over this very issue and someone uh, is writing in asking, what do I do, what do I do? So who, who, who do we uh, want to pick up with next that didn't talk? I think it's really important that in, in the situation, you know, we've talked about leading up to the situation, how important it is to have things like a living will or other documents and well, now that may help, but in the situation where you're in, the most important thing is mm -hmm. to give your grandmother the opportunity to express her yes. wishes yeah. and to clarify those wishes. Because it could be that the other members of your family believe themselves to be executing her wishes when they're actually in error. They may yeah. think that they're actually honoring her and serving yeah. her when in fact she feels differently. Mm -hmm. So the most mm -hmm. important thing is to 
give your grandmother an opportunity and support her and encourage her to share plainly mm -hmm. what she would like to have happen and then to, to share that with the medical community and with the family as well and ask the family to honor those wishes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody else has anything on that? No, that's good. Okay, that, all right, we've got that covered. Let's move on to a second issue uh, dealing with health-related uh, health matters. Um, a pastor prayed for me uh, to be healed. I thought that I was healed, but about a month later, my symptoms returned. Does this mean I don't have enough faith? Is what the viewer is asking. Well, and it's a good question. Um, uh, because many times we think that it is up to us. But uh, my friend Davey always says, uh, God made us, he knows how to fix us. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's a pretty uh, simple but truthful answer. And uh, and not only that, but there's a passage in Acts chapter 14 where it says in Lystra, there sat a man crippled in his feet who was lame from his birth and had had never walked. He listened to Paul as he as he was speaking Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. So in that instance, we see that it was the individual's uh, faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in James uh, 5.16, we see, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So in that case, it's the person that's praying right. mm -hmm. that has the faith to see healing take place. So, right. uh, you know, because this individual uh, had the symptoms return may or may not be related to their individual faith. Yeah. You need to go back to the pastor and say, you know, where's your faith, pastor? <laughs> <laughs> there's, an, there's an instance in the Bible where Jesus healed somebody, but then it, the condition came back. Lazarus was risen from the dead, but then he eventually died again. Sure. Well, I mean, so, I mean, there, there's this idea that, oh, once I'm healed, I'm healed forever. It could be. But it also could be that God wants to work through you that you were healed for a certain period of time for mm -hmm. a certain reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's... You know, contrasting examples where faith does not appear to be directly at stake, like in Galatians 4.13, Paul says, you know that it was because of a physical illness that I remained and preached the gospel to you for the first time. Paul makes no mention of the presence or absence of faith. We can trust that Paul wasn't suffering a lack of faith. Instead, the sickness becomes, by God's gracious providence, the occasion of the conversion of of uh, uh, beginning of a new church. Or in 1 Timothy 5.23, Timothy uh, is concerned because of his many maladies, his physical mm -hmm. ailments, and Paul writes to him and doesn't tell him you need to believe more or better or differently. He says, change your lifestyle. There's some practical yeah. things that you can adjust about your living so that you won't be facing these issues. So I think we have to be cautious, not, not, not that there's no connection, but we need to be cautious about drawing a direct connection between the quantity or quality of our faith and our immediate physical circumstances. Right. And well, Paul then asks God to heal him. And God says, what? I'm not gonna heal you because, because of that, you'll depend on me. Yeah. Otherwise you get too prideful, you get too arrogant. So I'm not gonna heal you. So we don't know why, you just have to trust God. That's right. Yeah. Very good, very good. And I'm amazed too. I mean, Pastor Seymour out in California at the Azusa Street uh, uh, was healing people. I mean, limbs were growing back, and yet he was still blind in one eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he wasn't healed of his infirmity, yeah. but other people were being, you know, healed of, of tremendous injuries. Right. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. So uh, you never know uh, what, the, what God's, that's the thing. We have to pray, your will be done. Mm -hmm. Because God's will may be that you heal for a while, or it may be that no healing will come. Yeah. We have to depend on him for the, for the whole thing. He is the author mm -hmm. and finisher of our faith. So. Yeah. Okay. Was, were you going to speak? I Go was ahead. going to, that's all right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was going to say there's a couple other things that could be going on too because um, a lot of times uh, issues in our soul can manifest in our physical body 
with pain. I don't know what the issue is. I mean, even cancers. They, there's a forgiveness therapy for issues of the body, including cancer. And yeah. so you might want to ask the Lord to search well, your heart. Along with the James passage, <laughs> yeah. You know, confess your sins. Right. It's and, like you got to bring some things out into and, the open and more within than your just heart. Confession. I mean, there are sometimes you have to go to somebody and say, you know, please forgive me yeah. and, and have that forgiveness given so that so that uh, the healing will come. Yeah. You know, it's it's the to give a picture. It's the stepping out from under an umbrella is when you're obedient and you obey God, you're under his protection, his blessing, his forgiveness, you, you know, his healing. But when you don't forgive, when you don't treat others right, you step out from that yeah. blessing and then yeah. you're, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. Did you finish what you were? I was going to add one more thing that you can, it can be a spirit of infirmity also. Uh -huh. So it's like when you pray, you, that goes for a time, but then, because not every physical issue is purely physical. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, that thing, that spirit goes for a time, but then it, like Jesus said, it comes yeah. back to see if yeah. it still has a place. Right. And if you let it, it will, and it'll try to convince you, oh, well, you're not healed then. It's like, oh, I got that pain back or I'm got that issue it's well no you need to stand and tell that thing to go amen. Uh, amen all right one more issue related to health um this one here um i suffer from depression my doctor wants to put me on medication but i feel like i will be labeled if i go on medication uh, can't god just heal me of this is the question they're asking yes <laughs> and the answer is yes. Um, I think we have to understand that God heals through a doctor because God is the one who gives the doctor wisdom and knowledge and training. And that's from God. Mm -hmm. God heals through medication. God is the one who allowed us to discover medicine, to understand how it works in our body. I mean, our, our bodies are extremely intricate. And to oh, know yeah. that, oh, yeah. hey, this pill will take away a headache or this, I mean, that's, that's a God thing. It's not a medical community. That's a God right. giving us wisdom. Wish more in the medical community realize right. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then God can heal miraculously. But either way, we need to understand that whichever way God chooses, God is the one who's doing the healing. It's not the medicine. It's not the doctor. It's God working through the medicine. God working through the doctor. Mm -hmm. okay. Wasn't it Washington Carver that uh, discovered 400 uses for the peanut? George Washington and, and Carver. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so, and so, uh, so we have that... Uh, uh, ability to, with any substance, you know, uh, a grain of rice, for example, and you can go through and dissect it and take it apart and figure out, okay, this is good for this and this is good for that. And it's all because God gives us that gift. George Washington Carver asked God, yes. how do I find an answer for yeah. this, this, this crop that we've, we've raised mm -hmm. and we yeah. don't know how Pina. to use it yet? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he, they said that uh, he would go into what he called God's little workshop. Mm -hmm. And he said when he'd close himself in the door there with the peanut, he said the Lord was, it's like the Lord was just unveil everything and show him how to take yeah. the peanut apart yep. and make different products, even children's crayons out yeah. of peanuts yeah. and then put the peanut back together again. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's understandable that he would have a concern over being labeled though. Um, yes. con conservative Christian culture tends <laughs> to carry a fairly skeptical attitude towards the mental health community, and sometimes for very good reasons. Um, but perhaps one question that this gentleman might, or this person, I'm assuming, I shouldn't assume, uh, this person would assume, um, a question they could ask is, would this medical intervention make it easier for me to serve and glorify God mm -hmm. in my day-to-day -day life? Yeah. That's, I think, the most fundamental question, just to echo what was said earlier, if a doctor, if you had you know, pneumonia and a doctor offered you penicillin, would you take it? I imagine you would, you mm -hmm. probably would. Sure. If you mm -hmm. are willing to receive from a doctor's hand that medication and give the glory to God for the healing that you experience, so it is with this, mm -hmm. with this regard as well. It's, Anxiety or whatever it yeah. might be. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I've seen doctors who were quite willing to admit that, you know, we, we, we do acknowledge God and we're just his instruments. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we've made a right decision because we were led by God. I, I, I've mm -hmm. seen that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I had an eye doctor that uh, prayed with me before I went into surgery for my cataract. No kidding. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, you never funny. know what you're yeah. going to run into. I, I think the, as long as I'm not jumping to medicine is my only solution, you know, that uh -huh. right. I want to search, I want to find. But if the doctor says, hey, this is the best option, okay, yeah. I can live with that, yeah. you know, if that's the best option. and. Yeah, the danger usually with, with sometimes as we go on medication, the medication helps us feel better, and then we think, I don't need the medication anymore. Well, no, the ooh. medication is what helps regulate me so that I do feel that way. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, I don't think you need to be feared. I think there is a problem with some of the communities where we label someone. I think that needs to go away. But it's, it's going and saying, God, is this what you want? Mm -hmm. If this is what you want, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, one thing that was very refreshing to me in the past, an experience I had, was the doctor that I had up until his retirement was a born-again Christian. Yep. And it was a delight to sit there with him. And, and, you know, this is a doctor that would sit and take time and talk with me. Yep. I really appreciated that. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. he, he ministered. He ministered. And um, so, yeah, there are doctors out there who recognize what God is doing through them. Give yeah. him the glory and the credit and say, we're just his instrument. You know? Yeah. You yeah. can just think yeah. of it as a tool. You know, I, yeah. I use a car yeah. and I use a cell phone. Cars have accidents. Cell phones cause us an untold amount of sinful distraction or, or offer sinful distraction. But they're just tools. It's not them that's doing it or leading me into it. If we can serve God by having a car, then, you know, all right, then mm -hmm. we should do that. You know, yeah. if, if we can serve God more ably by participating in the culture around us with a cell phone, all right, well, we can do that. You know, if we can serve God more ably by depending upon this particular instrument or tool, then good. If not, then don't. Yeah. Yeah. The, the overarching question is, what can I do with my life to glorify God and, and to preach his gospel to the people yeah. around me. Yeah. And if the medicine helps you and allows you to better serve God, then, then I would say, yeah, take the medicine. Don't worry what people are saying because yeah. people, sometimes they just like to talk, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> I would all about say one thing in the middle of that is with the reality that many depressions are caused by traumas, wounding from the past, it's, like, I, I wouldn't say you want to take the medication in order to avoid taking care of that because that, there's your root problem potentially. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, seek out some healing and freedom in that area. Mm -hmm. And if you've got to take medication in the process so that you can deal with that, then okay. Yeah. All right, well, that, we're going to have to end on that note. Thank you very much. We're out of time. And uh, I want to let you know that this panel will be back with us next week as well so make sure you tune in next week to get more of their wisdom we thank you for being with us today Thanks, and thank you for being with us until next week i'm bill harris god bless you for now bye bye You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.